Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Grammar for Success series. Today we're going to do the sending exercise, um, or kind of the very beginnings of lunging. Um, we call it the sending exercise because it comes in handy for a multitude of things besides just lunging a horse. Um, and our, the basis for teaching them is to send away from us. So that's kind of why we call it a sending exercise versus just teaching them how to lunge. Um, I'm standing here with Gracie, she's one of our yearlings. Uh, that's part of our Wolf Hollow Ranch program. Um, when she gets a little bigger, she'll be showing a cowboy challenge and ranch riding, and, and then hopefully she'll be uh, part of our broodmare band when she gets older. Um, but obviously we're picking our way through the groundwork program, um, and then she'll be started lightly uh, next summer. So she's just learning this exercise, so we'll kind of show you a little bit of kind of how to apply the cue, um, and we'll do kind of some troubleshooting as needed because um, this is pretty much as green as we have on the property right now when it comes to this exercise, so I figured she'd be a good one to use. So, all the exercises we've done up until now kind of teaches them the different cues that are going to be involved in the sending exercise here. So, we're going to kind of do a quick refresher on her on the yielding the shoulder, yielding the hip, and the backing up, and then we're going to transition those cues into the send around. And the send around uh, can be pretty useful, um, as I said, for a multitude of things. Um, obviously, it kind of teaches them how to move their feet uh, forward and sideways and move around you at different gates. Um, so you can install those cues for when you need them under saddle. But it also comes in really handy when you start, uh, when you start doing, back up, when you start doing things like trailer loading or any kind of introduction to the obstacles, which will come later in the uh, groundwork program, as well as when you saddle them for the first time, you one, want to make sure they respect your space, and two, want to be able to send them around to move their feet, uh, get them moving out. So the exercise from here on out uh, becomes a pretty uh, integral part of our groundwork program. So it's really important to take the time to get it relatively refined in the beginning. Um, because the more we go through our groundwork program, the more we rely on that particular exercise being refined. So, if she can stop eating the weeds here. So I've got a set of boots on her right now, just uh, on the front, to hopefully prevent her from stepping on her, uh, on her front legs as she learns how to do this. So you're going to take, uh, I always start off by sending them to the left, because most horses are the left side dominant. So they're a lot easier to work with on that left side, mostly because we spend all our time on that side. So that's the side we're going to start with because in theory it should be easier to get her to move around. So I'm going to take my training stick and string in the, in the right hand. I'm just going to make sure my string is kind of tucked up in my hand here. I don't really need the string part. Um, you can elect to take it off your stick if you want. Um, and then I'm going to shorten up on my lead rope and I'm going to step closer to the camera here because this part's kind of important. So I'm going to have a shorter feel on the lead, so probably about the length of my arm to start with. But you want your hand to be relatively fluid, so you want to be able to kind of slide up and slide down your lead as you do the exercise. So I always kind of just, I have black gloves with a black lead, so it's probably not showing up very well. But I just kind of put the lead rope between my thumb and index finger there. It's just kind of in the crook of my thumb. And that's kind of where I leave it for most of this exercise, assuming they're not pulling on me. 
So I'm just going to do a quick, uh, using the lead rope in my hand like that, I'm just going to do a quick uh, yield of her hip. Make sure she still knows how to do that one. And she's still pretty green with these exercises, so I'm not too worried about how she's doing it as long as she's moving her hip away. And then we're going to yield that shoulder. Yield that shoulder. Very good. Oh, there we go. Perfect. I'm going to back her up. Perfect. She's not too bad with those exercises, so we should be good to go. So the way I'm going to do this at first, she's going to probably move around a little bit while I'm trying to explain this. But I'm going to shorten on my lead a little bit. It's going to be in the crook of my thumb. And I'm actually going to take my hand and I'm going to rotate it so that my fingers are underneath the lead and my palm of my hand is kind of pointing out. And see how she already naturally wants to step up into that pressure? It's because, one, we've taught her how to step up off her halter pressure, which is halter breaking 101, which we don't get into in the groundwork program. So she already knows how to step up. But by opening that door for them, most of the time you're kind of giving them a direction to go. And that's kind of why, oops, sorry, that's kind of why I rotate my palm and have my palm facing up. It's kind of like pointing in the direction you want to go. And see how she's already kind of like, I'm going to go that way. And she's already stepping up into that as casually as she was stepping up. So that's step one. You're going to take your hand, you're going to rotate it out, you're going to open that door for them. I should have picked a different horse. She's going to be a little bit too refined with this. The second cue is going to be to yield that shoulder away from you out onto the circle. So I'm going to lift up, I'm going to flag that shoulder, and let her kind of move around. Once she's out there, I'm going to kind of leave her alone. So she kind of did a few steps there, and that's not too bad at the very beginning. And if she wants to walk those steps, I'm fine. So again, palm up, flag the shoulder, tap, tap if I have to, and let her move around, and let her move around me. So as long as she keeps this circle, I'm not really going to do anything. I am kind of bumping up her face a little bit so she doesn't eat, just because obviously we're trying to make a video. But otherwise, this is a fine pace. She's a yearling. I don't necessarily want her trotting around or loping uh, super fast uh, because of her little legs are still growing pretty good. So this walk pace is perfectly fine. If she was to trot, as long as she's not pulling on me, I'll allow her to trot because at least she's going where I asked her to go. So to get them to stop, we're going to sl uh, slide our hand up the lead and we're just going to step towards the hip and yield that hip around. So you can see where the yield the shoulder exercise came from uh, in our exercise here and where the yield the hip came from. Gonna yield our hip again there to get her to pay attention. And we're let her stand. So eventually we're going to incorporate the wool with kind of a lean to the side to yield that hip as she gets more refined. So same, same thing, I'm going to send her back out that direction. Rotate your palm, flag the shoulder, tap, tap, good job. Most of the time, if you spent your time and did your homework with the yield the shoulder exercises and the yield the hip, you shouldn't have to use your stick very much in this process because they should already know how to step up off the halter because they should be halter broke and they should already know how to yield that shoulder away from you and thus you shouldn't have to use your stick very much. So sliding up my lead, lean, low, and get her to stop. So most people don't want them to turn in and yield that hip around when they're doing this exercise. Now as we go through our stages of refinement for this exercise, which won't be entirely in this video, but once we get through all the stages of refinement, the horses will be able to do both, depending on my body language. If I just say whoa, they'll stop face like parallel to me and they'll just stop on the circle. If I lean over and yield that hip around, then they'll yield their hip around. They know how to do both, because when you're in the show pen for a lunge line class, they don't necessarily want them turning in. But if you're doing cold starting, I find them turning in like that is a much more focus-based and relaxed part of the exercise. So if they can turn and face me, they're focused on me, they're yielding that hip, they're disengaging any of that forward power. It comes in very handy when I'm on them for the first few times. If I pick up on that, on that bridle or on the halter, whatever I'm riding in for the first few times, and I yield their hip, they're going to yield their hip, their brain comes back to me. 
because that's what we taught them on the ground. So that's mostly why I get them to yield the hip and face me, is so that I can bring their focus back. Because sometimes when you're doing the lunging exercise, especially if you're doing multiple circles all at once with no changes of direction, they kind of get to autopilot and then they kind of lose all focus on you. They're just focused on going around and around and around. So when you ask them to stop, they just kind of keep going because they're not really focused on you. So that kind of brings them back to you, draws their attention back, and keeps everything a lot more relaxed, which is a much nicer scenario when you're cold starting. So we're going to get her to go to the left again here. Lift up. Yeah. I'll so she's sensitive enough that for the most part I only have to lift up and kind of send my, my, uh, just gonna drive her hips just a little bit there because she was trying to eat. So when they're out here on the circle, yield that shoulder again. When they're out here on the circle, where the girth would be on your saddle is kind of what you're gonna call a drive line. So anything in front of that, um, or anything behind that is what you're gonna kind of cue if you wanna drive them forward. So when she kind of lollygags there and wants to eat, I'm just tapping my stick on the ground. And right there, I'm going to yield her shoulder back out. Because I just want her to keep walking rather than worrying too much about the grass on the ground. Whoa. Beautiful. So now we're going to switch direction. Pick and string is going to come into my left hand with the uh, tail of the lead rope. And now the lead's in my right hand. And same thing, you're going to take the palm of your hand. You're going to rotate it up, you're going to yield that shoulder, you're going to send them out. And in the beginning, please be okay with the fact that you're only going to walk this exercise. Yield that shoulder again. So she's kind of a little heavy on, heavier on my hand on this side, so I'm just going to take a little bit further. So right there I just tapped her shoulder because she was trying to switch direction and go the other way. So as I was saying, she's a little heavier on my hand in this direction, so I'm just taking a little bit firmer feel of the lead rope. And if she tilts her nose to the outside, I'm just gently tapping her nose back towards me. It'll be hard to see just because she's got a black head and a black halter, and I've got black gloves and a black rope. But that's just kind of what we're, we're doing. And again, to whoa, we we'll slide up the lead, step towards her hip, yield that hip around. Don't be afraid of giving them a little bit of love there when they're doing a pretty good job. So again, rotate that palm out, away she goes, I don't even have to use the stick. Just gonna... If she's just leaning into me with that shoulder, I'm just gonna hold my stick straight up towards that shoulder and just kind of give it a little bit of a flag. We're just gonna kind of swing it back and forth a little bit, make sure she doesn't uh, come into our space with that shoulder. If she turns to try and face me or to go the other way, then that's when we're going to tap her shoulder and kind of yield her back out. There we go. So now that you kind of know the basic cues for getting them to go around, let's work on a, a change of direction. Because now she knows how to stop and yield that hip around, we can start working on a change of direction before we worry about speed. So I'm going to send her to the left. This is again, that's our better side. And this one's going to require a little bit of coordination on your part. So as they're going around, you're going to bring your hands together. You're going to switch hands. Your stick and string are going to go into the right hand. And she already kind of knows what she's doing here, so she's already preparing to switch. So I'm just going to hold that pressure, get her to step up, send that shoulder back out. So your hands are going to come together. You're going to switch hands with the stick and string. And I'm just going to keep pushing her because she's anticipating that. Your hands are going to come together. You're going to switch your stick and string into your left hand. You're going to step kind of towards them or step in front of them to cut that drive line off. And you're going to yield their opposite shoulder the opposite way. So I'm going to try and do it all at once here because she's anticipating. So hands together. Slide up your hand, or slide up your lead, and send the other way. If your horse has trouble uh, yielding their shoulders, you can always yield their hip around and then send them off that way. So I'll show you what that looks like. You're gonna slide up your lead, disengage the hip, switch hands, and yield their shoulder back the other way. So again, with the disengaging of the hip, change of direction, step towards their hip. 
change hands, go the other way. So that was kind of a good basic to start with. I'm going to keep her going here and then we're going to do the yield the shoulder change of direction. So I'm going to slide up the lead, tilt her nose towards me, yield that shoulder back the other way and let her go back this way. So now that she's kind of picking the trot on her own, just because she's a little more sensitive, so my cues are probably a little harder than they need to be, just because I'm trying to over-exaggerate my cues a little bit for the camera. So I was just kind of just letting her trot because she wasn't really pulling on me too bad, but now she's wanting to walk again, so I'll let her walk. It's a, it's a warm day. So I'm not really too picky on speed right now, as long as she's not trying to run away. If she was trying to lope off and pull me all over the arena, then I would be a lot more picky about what speed I want her to go. But right now, she's maintaining a really nice circle around me, so I'm not too worried. So again, stick goes into my left hand. So slide up the lead, step in front, yield shoulder the other way. And I'm just kind of casually letting the rope slide through my hand a little bit. That's why I wear gloves. To give her just a little bit bigger of a circle. sure that focus comes back to me rather than wherever wherever the heck her brain was going at that particular moment. Because she yielded really nice but she changed direction as she was starting to walk off. And that time I said I actually said whoa so that's a disengage and wait. Because we teach our horses that whoa doesn't necessarily just mean stop. For us because we do cowboy challenge there's a lot of ground tying involved. So for our horses, whoa means uh, stop and wait until we give you another cue. So that's how we start teaching them how to just stand here and ground tie or just stand and wait so that you can go off and do something else and ideally your horse is going to start staying where you asked it to stay. So whenever she goes to eat, I'm just using my stick to kind of tap her nose there, just bring her attention back to me. So now that she kind of knows the exercise, this is where you can start incorporating it into things. And I'm just going to show you briefly kind of what I mean, because uh, the sending exercise or the squeeze exercise and obstacles is going to be later on in our groundwork program, so I don't want to get too far ahead. But you can start uh, refining that already, as long as your horse is doing a good job. You might have to work with it for a little while before your horse is nice and soft with it. But you can start, uh, you can start challenging the horse a little bit. So I'm going to yield her shoulder kind of this way. Ask her to step up. I'm going to kind of come this way, yield that hip around, yield her shoulder, very nice, send her out this way. So I kind of just did a little bit of a figure eight there. Same thing, yield that hip, yield that shoulder. There we go. So when they kind of want, want to go 
the opposite direction, just kind of keep your pressure steady. And if they keep pulling on you to pull away, that's when you can start tapping their shoulder a little bit more to get them back the direction you're wanting to go. She's got a lot of flies bugging her right now, so that's why she's switching her tail. I can see them all flying. So once they kind of know, you can start, what I was just doing there is you can start walking with them and just kind of take this exercise mobile See, this part is where she's starting to struggle a little bit, so I'm just going to keep my cues steady, and we're just going to kind of walk around. Whoa. And again, she didn't, she didn't actually stop there, so I'm yielding that hip all the way around. I'm going to ask her to step up, draw towards me, and then we'll whoa. There you go. gist of it, as you start refining that exercise with your horse, you can start uh, walking around like we were doing just there. You can do figure eights, serpentines. Play with it. Get your horse nice and soft on those cues because when we come back to this exercise uh, after a couple more exercises, there's a couple more things on the checklist that we have to go through. And then we'll come back with the squeeze exercise, uh, which is a, a variation of what we were just doing. And then we're going to start incorporating obstacles into our training, and that's, again, where the sending exercise comes in really handy, as does trailer loading. So make sure you spend some time on this exercise, get it nice and refined, and we will see you guys with the next episode.